Hello everyone, it is Janine here. I am the pricing lady. I work with small business owners to help them know what to charge their customers and how to close more deals. Today on the show, I'm very excited to have a special guest, Mr. Martin Althair. Welcome, Martin. Thank you for having me. Hi, Janine. Morning. Hi. Martin, can you tell people a little bit more than what they're reading here about what you do? Yeah, I basically help people for 20 years to become successful by transforming what is holding them back into powerful tools to get from life what they want. Oh, wow. Excellent. Also, I want to say hello to all of you who are watching us live. And those of you who will watch us later, welcome to the show as well. And uh, why don't we just get stuck right into our topic today? Uh, I wanted to talk about self-sabotage. And the big question that we had is, are you self-sabotaging your business? What can you tell us about self-sabotage, Martin? Yeah, that's that's a very good one. And um, I was very happy that you were asking me um, when we talked the last time um, to do about that, because that's one of the most important things. Most of business owners are not considering that much, that there might be some um, personal self-sabotage behind what they are doing. And as we know, although um, that the business you have is a reflection of your personality and of who you are, and I had actually lately a very interesting discussion in a mastermind I did in Vienna. Um, the, there was a one, one um, a student who asked me, listen, but I, I know somebody, she's quite successful, but she is really, really damn, sorry to say that, damn a bitch. <laughs> As I look, um, being um, somehow who is maybe like strict or maybe even um, kind of bad to people, doesn't mean that they uh, are not able to succeed. But um, the point is, look at her business as such, how it's working, what, what is going on in her company. And he said, yeah, actually, we have, um, they have a, a very high fluctuation on, on employees. I said, ah, so people come in, going out, coming in, going out. He said, yes, but she's still earning a lot. And I said, okay, but calculate now what it costs her every time to bring somebody new in, um, give him the education to be good in that spot where this person has to work, and when you calculate that and minus that from her revenues, then you said, oh, then she's pretty poor. And you say, okay, look, that's the point. It's sometimes not so obvious, but right. it is somehow sabotaging your business, right? Mm -hmm. And, of course, that is just a, a tiny example to show how it can be a sabotage. Nobody even sees it, that mm -hmm. it is, although um, there is a lot of sabotaging around. When I look, so many um, entrepreneurs, startups, etc., are closing their businesses so quick again. And there, of mm -hmm. course, are a lot of um, aspects making this happen right but um, one really major big point is self-sabotage and mm -hmm. so yeah so i'm really happy talking about that and um, what it means um, sabotaging yourself your business and it's not only in the business i mean it's also in a private life right I mean, of course of course so do you see or have you seen because i know you work with quite a few entrepreneurs do you see the self-sabotage pattern also show up in how they're dealing with pricing in their business oh yes of course i mean the first one is is the biggest one maybe everybody out there feels it somehow mm -hmm. um how to make a price i mean right to dare asking the right price, and then comes the next question, but what is the right price? I mean, how <laughs> how can I estimate or um, determine the right price? Um, specifically, when I don't dare to make a bigger price, mm -hmm. and actually maybe the, the service or, or the product um, would be much better sold in a higher price range, but they don't dare because they somehow are still connected with a lower self-esteem, with a lower um, perception of themselves mm -hmm. um, that they say, ah, I mean, yes, it's it's like I, everybody is having this low price. I mean, the best the best um, uh, picture for that is in, in the therapy scene. Uh -huh. When I see there, um, uh, a therapist, I was lately speaking to somebody who said, look, um, we are charging 120 francs the hour. And I said, okay, how comes? And, and he said, because everybody is doing it. And because the health insurance is even happy about it. And I said, yeah, it is. It might be that the health insurance is happy about it, but are you? Are you? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then, then he said, not really. And I said, okay. I mean, when I, when I um, look at this, then I must say there should be something in the pricing. And that is why I gave him then your, your name to say, hey, get in touch with that lady. <laughs> 
get a good pricing because that's not the way. Right. Well, so. well, first of all, thank you for that. But yeah, no, it's it's true. And I mean, I see this all the time as well, as well especially around this topic of fairness. Uh, mm -hmm. People want so much to be fair. And in their, you know, fair implies that it's, you know, there's some equality for both sides or some sharing of both sides. But what I see people's interpretation of fair is when it comes to pricing is that it's fair to the customer, but if it's not fair to them, they're not so hurt by that. <laughs> and to me, that's not fair anymore, <laughs> right? Actually, they are not fair um, because um, giving it for a low price doesn't mean to be fair. Because I have learned very quickly and very early from a mentor of mine, um, who said, look, people who pay, pay attention. Right. And specifically when you are in a, in a mentoring business or in a, in a um, personal growth business, as I am, um, that is a very important part to understand. The higher the fire <laughs> um, under your butt, <laughs> the, yeah. the more you move forward because, yeah. because then, then you really want something from it, right? Yeah. Yeah. And and so actually it's unfair to say I give it very, very low in price because then the fire is low and yeah. much lower. It seems outside like, oh, that is kind, mm -hmm. that is fair, but actually it's not. Actually, no, it's, it's not much fair more fair to give the power and the push wanting really to get something out of it, which yeah. happens then when the pressure is higher, also financially. Right. 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 I mean, I think it's it can be a real motivator. It can be a deterrent for some people. Of course, the price is too high, but it can also be a motivator for people to really engage in the work that needs to be done as well. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. But then you go back to sabotage and, and sabotaging your business. Then, yes, it starts also with pricing, of course. Mm -hmm. And there are a lot of other parts behind it. And and um Often people don't even um, know about that, that there are some happenings already when, when you are genetically built, right. that there are already sabotage patterns and sabotage um, coding happening. Right. We, call, we call it the epigenetic coding. Right. And that comes actually through generations and there exists a very, very interesting research they did in, in Atlanta. And um, there, it was an, an, an experiment with rats and they um, let them experience fear from cherry blossom smell, um, scents. Okay. And that they did it like this. The, the system was the, the rats were on a metal platform and this metal platform every time was slightly with electrical shocks mm -hmm. when they put the cherry blossom smell. So they, they um, coded the fear, right? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> yeah. this, is, this is known to code it like that. But right. then um, these rats, um, had the next generation. And this ne next generation was born already with fear of cherry blossom smell yeah. without having this electrical shock. Yeah. And now comes actually the big shocker in my eyes or the, the big discovery, the next generation. Well. So when the, the babies of mm -hmm. the babies yeah. um, came up, um, this generation was born with an area in the brain dealing mm -hmm. with fear of cherry blossom smell. Wow. And if you take that, and if you um, take this to a genetic coding, then mm -hmm. you can understand, whoa, everywhere where traumatic things are going to happen, right. you have traumatic results already in the epigenetic coding. Right. And that is something you're not aware of, because right. you are born with it. You, you, come, you come to this planet happily, actually, and you just grow up, and you grow up with it without knowing that that is something which could sabotage you. Right. And, and understanding this shows how difficult it is for somebody who is just doing his best in his life to um, identify if he's right. sabotaging or if she is sabotaging him or herself. Right. Right. And um, another one is, of course, then the personal experience. That is what we right. actually, a bit, everybody knows it. Okay, I grew up like this or, or I had this and this experience. Mm -hmm. And um, through this, I became this person I am. We know also these sayings, I'm the sum of all my experiences, etc., which is very true. Mm -hmm. It's really happening. Um, on the other hand, what not so many people know that the major programming actually happens between zero and seven years old. Means everything you have learned there to survive or to make mm -hmm. a good life 
ish right um is more um kind of remoting you the rest of your entire life yeah so means um maybe everybody knows this who is listening right now um you go in a situation and you realize oh i should have reacted differently or i should have done it differently i do it already so often every time the same way and i know now this is not a good reaction <laughs> so i plan it i even really plan it if, if i come in such a situation again Mm -hmm. I will react differently. And I even plan how. Right. And then when you come into a similar situation, what is happening? Boom, you do it again the same way like before. <laughs> and you do it and you know you're doing it and you know you shouldn't be, but you can't seem to help yourself. Yeah? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm yeah, not the only one who's had that problem. <laughs> yes, a very typical one is um, the stereotype of relationships, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you yeah. say, such a guy I never fall in love anymore with, and boom, it's again the similar <laughs> thing. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> or such a lady I don't fall in love anymore and boom it's the similar thing yeah. so how is this happening and this is happening actually in the brainstem because okay. there you have this coding from zero to seven mm -hmm. um, where you saw how relationship functions between those people you grew up among them right mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. might have been your parents if you did not grow up with your parents it might have been your grandparents or um, adoptive parents as adopted mm -hmm. um, these people who have lived in front of you, the relationship, that was imprinting you the most. Okay. So actually this is um, coded here in your, in, in your brainstem. And if it comes to relationship, you search like, like um, driven, exactly mm -hmm. having this, what you, are, what you are used to see. Right. Is that why people tend to get into relationships with people who are similar to their parents? <laughs> Has a bit to do with, yeah. yes, for That's, sure. You know, that would be sort of, for many people, that would be a safety zone as well, yeah. Of course it is, because that is what you know. And everything yeah. you know, you feel safe, although often it is not such a safe place. <laughs> right? I mean, I, I'm not talking in general, but yeah. um, we know that very often, um, especially in relationships, um, mm -hmm. it can be a very unsafe place. Yeah, yeah. Um, just, just yesterday, I was talking to a client who who gets beaten up from her husband day by day. So um, it can be a very unsafe place. Right, and right. When we were digging a bit deeper, she realized, yeah, it's actually my grandparents' story and I grew up with my grandparents. So it, it's it's very related. So, but how can we translate that to business now? Mm -hmm. I mean, everything you, you do in life, you do for a certain reason. And the certain reason basically is to survive. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, as, as, as unromantic it sounds, but that is what you do. <laughs> you try to survive and you try your best doing it on the best way. And that you do on these patterns mm -hmm. and imprints you have learned in the time between zero and seven. Mm -hmm. So um, there are often also decisions you have taken um, which are related to how you were able to think. And as we know, uh, the, the brain structure of a, of a um, child between zero and seven sometimes eight i mean it's not really that hard framed but i mean that range of of age mm -hmm. um is not yet ready to have a structural thinking so it okay. is more a reactional thinking right. so it is just like okay then i react that that way and if it functions then i i mm -hmm. take it and then i, I in, in the future I'm, I'm going to keep that right so like this and i see how my parents are doing it like that okay my teacher is doing it like this so mm -hmm. i do it that way um for example um there was a a client I have once and he wanted to open businesses and he every, every time failed hard time. I mean, right. really big time. He failed. Um, he was completely bankrupt and everything. That was the moment he came to me okay. and um, we were talking and I was searching a bit. And um, the, the key situation was when he came to school, mm -hmm. he was seven years young and he was super happy because his elder brother was already in school and he was super proud now also being in school you know and he, and he sat there the first day and was super excited and and the teacher said okay listen guys everybody who is left-handed raise his hands and he was left-handed oh, and he was so excited and he raised his hands and and um that was four or five others in the class as well and yeah. the teacher said well everything everybody who raised his hands right now will never ever achieve anything in life oh my <laughs> i mean 
Yeah. Besides that, what's an idiot of a teacher? What happened with my client? Yeah. He believed it. Yeah. And because he believed it, he followed that much this belief that he never ever succeeded in any business ever. Right. Right. This is a very obvious one, although he didn't remember that right. sequence, actually, until we started to dig into his story and figure it out. Yeah. Yeah. So there are so many other stories and so many mm -hmm. other situations. Mm -hmm. I'm sure people out there can relate to saying, wow, if that has an impact, then I What's start impacting me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So Martin, if you if you're starting to you know this obviously this uh, information you're sharing with us will get people to start thinking about ooh, what you know what could be affecting me and my business. So what do you do about it? Yeah. Okay, first story is um, mm -hmm. I, I want to detect is there something that is hindering me. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, second step is if I figure out there is something, then I have to do something with it. Right. Um, there are techniques and tools how to do that. Mm -hmm. And then I dissolve it. Okay. This is actually the, the simple thing, how you do it. Right. And um, the self-transformation code um, I developed over the last 20 years with working with um, more than 5,000 clients in one-on-one -on -one sessions right. um, does that very well. He, right. The self-transformation code is very good at that. Mm -hmm. Decoding, cracking the code, decoding these sequences and mm -hmm. figuring out, is there really something um, bothering me or, or hindering me to be right. successful. Right. Um, on the other hand, how can somebody who is listening right now mm -hmm. directly mm -hmm. figure out, is there something hindering me? And that's yeah. very simple. And um, I would invite everybody who is listening right now, um, do this. Ask yourself, where am I now in my life? Mm -hmm. And look around how you live in every detail. Mm -hmm. And then figure for yourself, is that what you want to live? Or is there something you don't want? Right. Or are there even many things you don't want? Mm -hmm. And if that is so, then there are things that are holding you back having this, what you actually want. Mm -hmm. As simple it sounds, but that is the beginning. There you start to see, oh, wow, that's true. Actually, it's not what I want. I feel quite comfortable maybe in it, right. but it's not what I really want. Right. So if that happens, when you look right now to your life, what you have achieved, where you're in, what you're doing, then there is something hindering. you. Right. Because there is this discrepancy between right. what you want and where you are. Where right. You are. And yeah. the self-transformation code closes this gap between where you are and where you really want to be. Right? But I mean, but again, I mean, once we get a lot of times when you get what you want, then, you know, there's a sense that you want the next thing or something more or something different um, and how does that play into it? That is a natural um, mm -hmm. thing that when we have achieved something then we look for the next for mm -hmm. the next we like but doesn't mean that that one I just um, achieved right now is not the, the thing I wanted right. right and it's more about what I have achieved is not what I wanted mm -hmm. then you're pretty sure that something is holding you back Right, right. Then the, the next thing is um, specifically when we talk now for businesses, mm -hmm. if your business doesn't budge. Right. Very simple. Yeah. If it yeah. doesn't budge, you're not getting the two possibilities. The one possibility is that the service you want to provide just is not wanted from anyone, mm -hmm. which is very, very rare mm -hmm. because actually you find for <laughs> everything an audience <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's, true. it's absolutely true it amazes me yes yeah. yeah. my own clients yeah. many different ideas and and offers there are out there for different products and services absolutely amazing yeah yes that's true so it's very rare mm -hmm. so it must be something which is sabotaging or you sabotaging yourself yeah. because often people believe it's coming from outside. Sabotage is coming from somewhere towards you. No, it's coming through no, you to the outside. So yeah. it's you who does it. You are responsible for your successes. You are responsible for what is not working. As, as yeah. much we wish sometimes to say, yeah, but that one didn't deliver. No, right. no. you put yourself into the position having somebody in life who is not delivering. You. Right, right. So, so you have to move. Okay. And okay. So Very that, good. Is, that is the thing how, how you can detect immediately right now self sabotage in your life. Right. 
So and there is still a third point which we have not yet spoken about self-sabotage, which is also a very tricky one. And I realize absolutely from almost nobody known. And that is the family systemic. Uh-huh, yes. Um, if you if you are um, familiar with The Big Leap, um, which is a fabulous book anyway to read, uh -huh. um, especially, especially when you um, deal with self-sabotage, um, then you see there is one, one um, limiter in your life, and that is your family system. Mm -hmm. Means you are entangled in your family. So everything which happens in your family is also related to balance and to bond means you are bond to your family and if there is something in your past of your family which was not righteous mm -hmm. then you try as as um uh, as follower of the family you try to balance that one by living it in a way it sounds very difficult now because it's quite quite difficult to explain but yeah. i have a story which make it make maybe easier to understand mm -hmm. i had once a teacher coming um to to my praxis after uh, asking for my expertise and mm -hmm. she said um listen i have really a problem because every time when i come to a school i'm two three days there and then the troubles are starting and normally after one to two months i get fired or if that doesn't happen i get sick mm -hmm. So long and then I get fired. Huh, interesting. And I said, whoa, there's that sounds that there is an, an entanglement because mm -hmm. that is very typical when something like this happens, it's normally not experiencing and then acting. Mm -hmm. And it's also not so much epigenetic um, coding. That sounds like a, a family system thing. Right. And I asked her well, how, how you grew up, and she said, Yeah, I'm actually the youngest daughter of 12 um, siblings. Wow. And we are farmers. <laughs> uh -huh. Okay, interesting. He said, "Yes, I'm the only one who wanted to become something else than a farmer." And he said, "Oh, okay, nice. So how it happened?" She said, "Yeah, when I went to apply for the teacher seminar, my mother came with me." I said, "Wow, how old were you?" She said, "Yeah, I was actually 20. I said, "Ah, uh -huh. your mother came with you?" "Yes, she came with me." I said, "Okay, <laughs> what happened then?" She said, yeah, we went there and we had the talk. My mother was also there. And then on the way back home, my mother said to me, but you know, not that you believe that you're now something better than we are. Uh -huh. And that was in the age of 20. So it is not that imprinting part anyhow. Right. right. But it's a family systemic entanglement right. not to outshine the family, mm -hmm. not to be better although it has nothing to do with being better but right, right. that feeling of if i am now different than I, my family then i'm not following my tribe right so I, I feel like first of all i feel i put myself aside myself mm -hmm. and i get put aside from my tribe so I guess I the, body, the body feels that or reacts to that as a as a, a threat feels. to survival your heart, right yes yeah. your heart feeling it's like i get separated from my tribe because i i become differently now right and although she was not aware of that of course she went to the teacher seminar became a teacher but then she started mm -hmm. sabotaging herself not being better than her family yeah, yeah. so uh, by by um dissolving that problem she got the next job and guess what she still have it so uh -huh. it, is, it is really this thing so you can really dissolve these things and then the the life goes more smooth and right. really successfully as you wish it to go yes. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent, Martin. Well, I'd like to uh, say hello to all of those who are watching us live. Thank you for joining us. Uh, Martin, we're actually out of time. So are, they, well, are there any last words uh, you'd like to share, ideas or thoughts you'd like to share with the community? Yeah, I, I like to say, look, there is a very simple systematic, which is called um, the breakthrough blueprint that says, um, crack your code untangle your life map and manifest your genius mm -hmm. okay i'm touching here a next a next step like uh, manifesting your genius what does this mean what is that we don't have the time now to explore that but i just want to encourage everybody out there if mm -hmm. you do an own business if you if you're struggling right now at the moment understand it's not destiny that throws you down right it is just something you have to take care of 
So take care of yourself and get right. somebody who helps you to dissolve these issues. Because right. then, then you can really, the, your business can budge. You can be successful. You can have the relationship you want to have. Mm -hmm. um, it's not something from the outside that is hindering you. Mm -hmm. I just want to encourage you to understand, wow, there is something, there is hope. And not only hope, there are systems and techniques <laughs> helping you really to get through it and to make what you want in your life. Right. And Martin, where can people reach you if they want to find out more? It's very simple. They can get on my website, can, can drop me there an email, or they can go to Facebook, Martin Alter. They will find me there, um, can drop me a message there, can um, ask a friend request. I will reply for sure. And maybe a short note, hey, I was I was listening to the podcast with Janine. Then I know a bit more than you have priority because I have a lot of friend requests every day. It's about 100 <laughs> a day, and I cannot deal with all of them. Right, but if right. you give me a short message on it, then I for sure will take you in. Yeah. Yeah, so if you contact Martin, be sure to let him know that you saw him here on the show uh, today. So, or if you watched it later, of course, then as well. So yeah. thank you so much, Martin, for, for joining me today. I think this has been absolutely fantastic. And it's a subject that, you know, it's not, as you said, it's not just business related. It's very much related to many things in life. And we all have these patterns where we, you know, get in our own way. <laughs> it's time oh, yeah. to get out of the way <laughs> it was a super pleasure being with you i was really happy sharing with you these thoughts and with your community mm -hmm. and yeah i wish everybody the much success as he can achieve yeah so thank you everyone for joining us today a couple of words i'd like to let you know i have uh if you'd like to find out more about pricing in your business i have a scorecard that you can do online go to janineliston.com backslash pricing scorecard and you can find that there. I also am in the run up to enrollment for my next online program which will be available to register or enroll for in January and you can check that out at janineliston.com backslash yes so that you can get your pricing sorted out in the following in the next year. I wish you all the best everyone. Thank you for joining us today and we'll see you next time as always. Enjoy pricing, everyone. Bye. Thank you very much. Bye.